Hi, beautiful people. Welcome to the Fort Salem Library, where we read you your fanfiction. So sit down or don't, relax or don't, and enjoy these stories in a way you have not before. We at Fort Salem Library do not own Motherland Fort Salem or any of the related characters. The Motherland Fort Salem series is created by Elliot Lawrence and owned by Freeform. This story is a work of fan fiction and is meant for entertainment only. We are not making any profit from these stories. All rights of the original Motherland Fort Salem story belong to Freeform. We also do not own Small or any of its original characters and storylines. We did, however, get permission from the author to read their story. This story was created and written by Guess Who? And you can find the link in our show notes. This story is being read to you by Danny. Small, Chapter 12 Through their one small window, the murky shades of pre-dawn twilight illuminated on stillness. Only the slightest trembling, the faintest rise and fall of chest and breath, stirred the quiet space as Sarah sat upright and bare in the center of her bed. Sweat slicked and nearly delirious with pleasure, Tally perched atop her, her long naked legs ringed around Sarah's middle arms looping her neck and shoulders. Her fingers tunneled in Sarah's free, unkept hair and scratched mindlessly, deliciously at her scalp. The tips of their noses brushed. Wet lips hovered just outside a kiss as they breathed together. Tally's nibbles pebbled and peaked, rubbed against Sarah's with little pops of static and warmth. Her thighs were clenched around the wrist, wriggled between them, as she dripped into Sarah's open hand, three of Sarah's fingers buried deeply inside her. Sarah didn't move a muscle, didn't twitch or shift or give anything at all. Instead, she smiled against Tally's quivering lips and whispered, Breathe, my love. Tally whimpered. She'd been holding position for nearly five minutes now, staving off the orgasm Sarah had built up and broken down more times now than either could count. She inhaled slowly, exhaled with just as perfect a measure. For a moment, Sarah closed her eyes, collapsing her forehead against Tally's just long enough to take a steadying breath of her own. Tally's muscles still gripped and throbbed around her aching fingers despite the long cool-down, and Sarah couldn't help but smile. Tally's desire was dizzy. Her body was art. And her pleasure? Her pleasure was something altogether divine. Every breath they took, every rocking thrust of their hips and hands, every slide of lip on lip and flesh on flesh bore a rhythm entirely their own. Since their first night together, they had always been perfectly in tune with one another, in both body and mind. But this? Now? Their synchronicity had never been more exact or extraordinary. Sarah could only assume it was another strange and wonderful product of pure song, one she knew would become an addiction. Sarah felt madness in her bones, in every breath, and yet she had never been more present. She had never been more alive. Are you ready? She murmured against Tally's lips and felt rather than heard her response. The gentle shift in Tally's hips set all Sarah's nerves aflame in an instant. There would be little building this time. They would reach their peak in moments only. She could feel it. Tally had been so close for so long now, and Sarah had never been far behind her. This time, she knew, there would be no stopping, no holding it off. Tally moaned into her mouth as Sarah began a steady rhythm inside her, curling and stretching her sore fingers to delicious effect. I'm not going to last. <laughs> I know. Sarah chuckled, a throaty sound as she kissed down the length of Tally's sweaty, salty neck and back up. Her voice hadn't yet recovered from their work, neither had Tally's. 
Despite their exhaustion, they would not slept a wink since returning to their own room, their own bed. They had only done this, disappearing into one another like distance in the fog. Neither will I. The groan that rumbled from Tally's throat widened Sarah's grin. Don't say that to me, or I'm definitely going to come. Sarah sucked Tally's bottom lip into her mouth and bit down. She soothed it with a swipe of her tongue. I'm counting on it, she whispered, then thrust her fingers deeper inside Tally's gripping heat and sent her soaring. The sound Tally made was like work, cry so soulful that it made Sarah's skin prickle. Chills erupted over every inch of her and spilled down her spine. Her heart raced, and she rutted against the back of her own hand as Tally trembled and twitched and rocked through every wave, riding Sarah's fingers to her glorious completion. And when their eyes locked, Tally's weren't a rich brown anymore, but a vibrant, glittering purple. Sarah barely had the chance to process the sight when Tally sang that sweet, reverent moan directly into her mouth and pulled Sarah after her into ecstasy. It was intense, almost unnaturally so, the way Sarah's orgasm didn't crash over her but trickled in like a wet whisper. A secret. She felt it in every part of her body, a flush of heat warming each inch, turning her liquid. Her thighs ached. Her toes tingled. Her fingers, still buried inside Tally, clenched and burned. Her heart felt as if it might rock its way out of her chest. Sarah, Tally panted against her lips. Your eyes. Sarah stuttered over her own voice as she wrote out the last tremors of her pleasure. Her free hand found Tally's cheek. Yours, too. They trembled their way to calm together, collapsing onto the mattress side by side. Nothing but arrhythmic beats and breath and bliss. Sarah slid her sore fingers from Tally's perfect heat and let them slide up over her lover's belly. She wiped them on the flesh there and rested, enjoying the warmth of Tally's skin, the little earthquake she could feel beneath. That was... Her words dissipated into laughter, grated and drained and gorgeous and all Sarah could do was pant and nod beside her. <laughs> what? What's that? Perfect. Sarah whispered as she drew Tally closer, her mind already beginning to haze. It was perfect. Sleep curled at the edges of her vision like hands creeping over her eyes, shadows crawling over the sun. She was so tired. She was so happy. A breathy chuckle left her lips, shook in her chest, and then she was going, drifting into sleep to the sound of Tally's rapidly deepening breaths just at her ear, every part of her warm and easy. Her hand still resting over Tally's belly, fingers sticky and hot, her heart still thudding, body ringing like bells. Had anything in her life ever been so right. When Sarah woke again, it was to the irritating sound of someone's insistent knocking. A biddy, undoubtedly, as no one else ever dared approach her bedroom without prior permission. She carefully cracked one eye open, unwilling to be blinded by morning light, only to realize her room was still quite dark. She opened her eyes fully and leaned up enough to glance at the window. Outside, the caligonous sky was smooth and starless, dusted here and there with gray foam clouds. It was night. Goddess, they slept the entire day away. Not that Sarah was surprised, after everything. She sighed as the knocking persisted and slowly peeled her numb, tingling arm out from under Tally's sleeping weight. The girl was sprawled on her back, as usual, and completely uncovered. Her long legs were tangled with Sarah's. Her hair cast over her face, and her pale skin milky in the moonlight. Sarah sighed again at the sight, softer, reverent. 
She leaned down and kissed Tally's shoulder, then her chest. Tally didn't move or mutter, not an inch or a sound. Sarah smiled and lay another kiss to the warm, soft flesh just above her belly button. Then finally, against her will, she dragged herself out of bed. Sensing who was at the door and that she was alone, Sarah didn't bother donning any clothes. She padded to the door in her full glory and opened it to find Savannah hovering on the other side, brow furled like that of a worried grandmother, and fist poised to knock again. As soon as she saw Sarah, her hand felt to prop on her hip as her gaze dropped down the length of her. An annoyed huff of a breath left her wrinkled lips. You couldn't have thrown on a rope. You've seen it before, Sarah croaked and shrugged one shoulder. What do you need? Has something happened? Yes, Savannah said, exasperated. What's happened is you and Tally locked yourselves in your room over 24 hours ago. And while we've been patient in letting you rest, we're starting to worry the two of you might never come out again. And Tally isn't like you, Sarah. The girl has to eat. You can't just skip all her meals in favor of sex and sleep. Sarah frowned. It hasn't been 24 hours. No, Sarah. It's been longer than that. It's 10 o'clock at night. We got back from the infirmary yesterday before noon, and none of us have seen you yet. Oh, Sarah blinked a few times, the information slowly sinking into her sleep-addled and still exhausted brain. Right. Savannah snorted and shook her head. Here, she said and turned to reveal a small wheeled cart behind her. Sarah immediately recognized it as her bar cart, only instead of housing her whiskey decanter and crystal glasses, it held a tray of assorted foods and two pitchers, one of water and one of what Sarah could only assume was orange juice, based on its color. Savvy, Sarah said and took the cart, wheeling it past herself and into the room, making sure to keep the door pulled enough to hide Tally's sprawled exposure. Have I told you lately? How much I cherish you. Yes, yes, Savannah waved a dismissive hand. Let's don't snot ourselves at this hour. With a laugh, Sarah reached out and ran her fingers over Savannah's frizzy gray hair. Thank you, she said, then gave a playful tug. I'm sure Tally will want to thank you as well, once she calls herself from the clutches of sleep. No need. Again, Savannah waved her off. We will see you both in the morning. Get some more rest now. Goddess knows you both earned it. Indeed. Sarah turned to go, only to stop again. Rest, Sarah, she said, pinning Sarah with stern eyes. Not another sexathon, much as I'm enjoying the power boost. Hm. Sarah hummed with a smile that she hoped appeared as mischievous as intended. No promises. She knew she'd been successful when Savannah scoffed and rolled her eyes, then disappeared down the small hallway to the biddies' dorm. Good night. With a gentle kick, Sarah closed the door and wheeled the cart to the bedside. She poured a glass of water and sat at Tally's side. Tally, she said and ran her fingers through Tally's messy hair, pushing it back to reveal her beautiful, sleepy face. Hallie's face scrunched, but her eyes remained closed. Her lips were dry as she opened them, just enough to answer. They half snorted, half grunted. Mm, that sparked a laugh in Sarah's belly. Open your eyes, my love. She didn't. Come now. Just one eye? One bleary eye barely cracked open, seeking Sarah in the dark. Swa. So, uh, Nothing's wrong, Sarah assured her. You needn't worry. The biddies were concerned I was holding you hostage in here without food or water. Tally's laugh was dry and wheezy, and for the life of her, Sarah would never understand how such a sound could make her feel such a way. Tally at her messiest, most exhausted, most ridiculous, naked and limp as a noodle, sprawled on the bed like a bug squashed beneath a boot made Sarah ache in ways for which no words existed, she was certain. 
Her chest felt expansive and growing by the moment, by the second, by the breath. Oh, how'd she miss this? Her. Them. They're not wrong, Tally said, her voice like gravel, and Sarah poked at her side in retaliation. Though, technically, I guess I have eaten. Her other eye blinked open, and a cat-like grin spread over her lips. Just not food. A laugh bubbled up Sarah's throat and out. How scandalized others would be if I told them how lewd you really are. No one would believe you, Tally said as she groaned and sat herself up to lean against the headboard. She pointed to her cheeks. These dimples are an indisputable mark of innocence. I have known devils in dimples before, my dear. Tally chuckled and took the water from Sarah's hand. She drank it down and freed an obnoxious sigh. Oh, goddess! I didn't realize how thirsty I was. Thank you. Or, you know, thank the biddies for me. Of course. Is that toast? Tally blinked again as her gaze found the food cart. And orange juice? And bananas? And berries and almonds and even a bowl of oatmeal, though it might be cold by now. Tally leaned over the side of the bed and grabbed a slice of toast. You realize I only married you for the biddies, right? How fortunate for me. Sarah chuckled even as Tally's brow dipped into a frown. I don't know why I said that. Sarah rested her hand on Tally's chilled naked thigh and rubbed gently back and forth. About marriage? Yeah, she said, still frowning even as she took a bite of her toast. That was weird. Yes, well, you have mentioned it several times now, Sarah told her, both since the procedure's completion and before. You made several comments of the like while you were a child. Oh, truly the biddies had a field day with it. She ran her hand over Tally's messy hair and smiled, unbothered, encouraging. She didn't want Tally to feel stressed or embarrassment, especially over something that, as Tally herself had mentioned, was essentially a non-issue for them. They were bound to one another in the purest, richest way any two people ever could be, deeper than any friendship or blood tie or traditional marriage. And in the eyes of their kind, they had been hand-fasted the moment their soul bond was formally recognized, whether they officially courted themselves or not. What was there to be embarrassed about? Perhaps Sarah had been struck by the first mentions Tally had made of marriage, first little hints, but not because it bothered her or scared her, rather because it excited her. More than 300 years of life and Sarah had never once been handfasted. She never even had the urge to be. Never had she loved as she has loved Tally. Never had she committed herself to another as she had to Tally. And never would she again to any other. What do you mean? Tally's frown was back, tugging her brow, her lips. Confusion riddled every inch. They are convinced you wish to have a traditional hand-fasting ceremony, Sarah explained, because of the comments you made while you were small. While I was small? Tally's voice sang with bewilderment. Sarah, what are you talking about? What do you mean when I was a child? She set her toast, half-eaten aside on the cart. What? Why would I have talked about marrying you when I was a child? How would you even know if I did? Wait, is this some kind of weird joke I'm not following? Because you know I'm dumb when I'm sleep deprived. Sarah stared at her, gauging Tally's sincerity. When she found nothing but genuine confusion in her lover's eyes, her stomach well and truly dropped. Her heart began to race. Tally, she said, squeezing her thigh. What do you remember? From my childhood? Tally asked, face still scrunched. About you? I mean, nothing good, if I'm honest, but you already know that. I told you how my mom was about you. No, my love, I meant the last 24 hours. What do you remember of the last week? Two weeks? Tally, do you not recall what happened to you? You mean in the tarot? Tally was so clearly confused that her eyes began to water, shimmering with tears in the dark. I remember, Sarah. 
How could anyone forget becoming a biddy? She huffed out a lost little laugh and lay her hand over Sarah's, squeezed it in a fashion Sarah recognized, the tight, clenching grip Tally used when she was trying desperately to soothe herself rather than Sarah. Why are you... The unbinding went smoothly, just like I told you it would. Everything's okay now, right? Is something... Sarah, is something wrong with me? Her free hand came up to her face as if searching for wrinkles or hidden marks. Something to indicate she wasn't as she was meant to be. Something to reveal the work hadn't, in fact, worked at all, and she was still very much bound to Sarah in a way she was never meant to be. Sarah quickly reached for her hand and pulled it from her face. She held it both between her fingers and began a soothing massage, one digit after another. Hush now she said both to Tally and to her own hammering pulse. Take a breath. Tally did as she was bid, inhaling and exhaling under Sarah's direction until she started to calm again. Then, please tell me, whatever it is. Sarah steadied herself with a breath. She hadn't expected this. She'd known Tally had been fuzzy after the pure song procedure, that her memories had already begun to haze, but she'd never imagined they would leave her entirely. And so soon. Was that part of the work they perform? And was it a happy side effect? Or a heartbreaking one? My love, I promise you, you are well, Sarah assured her, leaning in to seal the swear with a gentle kiss. We both are. She wasn't sure how to say what she had to say next. In fact, she wasn't even certain she should say anything at all. What if it was the goddess's will that Telly forgot what had happened to her? But something happened, Telly said. Something you're not telling me. Why? What did you mean when you said I was small? Sarah sighed. Of course she had to tell her. Tally knew Sarah to her very bones and beyond. She knew Sarah in ways Sarah couldn't even begin to know herself. And she knew, always, when Sarah was withholding. And while her dimples had convinced the masses that she was no threat, Sarah knew well that Tally Craven brooked no arguments when it came to secrets and lies. She would have none of it and she would dig until she broke them wide open and struck the center of everything they had ever been or could be to one another if she had to. Sarah crawled over to Tally and eased back against the headboard beside her. She encouraged Tally to move in front of her and settle between her legs, her back to Sarah's chest, Sarah's arms wringing her middle. She kissed Tally's shoulder, then rested her chin over it. I love you she said, quiet but fierce, and squeezed Tally close. I know, Tally whispered and ran her hands over Sarah's arms, kneading and clutching. Just tell me. It will be a lot to process. You'll help me. No doubt. No worry. Sarah's heart ached at the surety. All right, then. Quiet circled the breakfast table like something alive, heavy and oppressive and creeping from one person to the next. The biddies shared furtive glances between them that made the back of Sarah's neck prickle and her skin crawl. She looked to Tally opposite her. Her love sat with her head down, eyes fixed on the large stack of pancakes on her plate, a stack she normally would have to half devoured by now, but that remained mostly untouched. That, too, forced discomfort down the length of Sarah's spine. She felt rigid and stuck, trapped, a sensation that ate rapidly at her calm and her patience. Stop this, she finally commanded along the link and felt the biddies each bristle in response. We aren't doing anything, Kate defended. Sarah wasn't having it. Precisely, she responded. When was the last time any of you sat for a meal with Tally and didn't once speak to her? She woke last night to realize a large portion of her memory is gone, 
a state which has neither improved nor altered since, and rather than offer her comfort or even camaraderie, for the sake of the goddess, you sit here in silence and allow her to fester in her worry. Sarah. The sound of her name on Tally's tongue drew Sarah's gaze to her again. She found Tally's soft, sad eyes pleading. I know you're talking about me. She glanced around the table. All of you. Sarah cleared her throat. <laughs> I was only expressing my concern for you. <laughs> More like admonishing us for making you uncomfortable, Yarrow said, and Tally sighed. <sighs> Fine. No, you're not, Yarrow said with a shake of her head, and we shouldn't be making things so awkward. Sarah nodded in agreement, only to be hit with a glare from her favorite person. I'm fine, Tally said again, firmer. Yes, I lost some memories, but I'm still me. I still remember everything before the original unbinding, so please, all of you, stop acting like I woke up with my soul scooped out of my body, and now you don't know what to do with me. When no one spoke a word in response, Tally ripped a syrupy piece of pancake off her stack. She balled it up between her fingers and chucked it hard across the table. Sarah jerked back, blinking in shock as the pancake slapped right between her eyes and stuck there. That means you too, Tally said, and for a sharp frozen moment, nobody moved or breathed a word. And then all at once, the biddies erupted like a volcano spewing only joy. Laughter jumped through the air in great whoops and whirls, and Sarah could do nothing but let herself be laughed at. She didn't even bother to remove the pancake from her face. She didn't care that it was there. All she cared about was the sinking in front of her. Two little dimples burrowing into two perfect cheeks, stretching around a perfect mischievous smile. All she cared about was the twinkle in Tally's eyes. Perhaps a bit dimmer than usual, but still very much there. Still very much hers. Sarah felt that twinkle, that grin, those two sinking dimples in the very heart of her. Like warmth, they enveloped and soothed her until she felt a smile of her own pulling at the corners of her mouth. Her face was sticky, but her heart was full, and all her discomfort, all her worry, led away as quickly as the silence. Marry me. The words were out of her mouth before Sarah even had a chance to think on them, but she couldn't regret the way they sang in her voice. A request, a command, a need directly from her soul. And the moment they escaped, the entire table fell quiet again. Just as alive as before, but vibrant now and colorful. Bright. And where Sarah expected surprise, she found in Tally only gentleness, a shy kind of bliss that made her blood run hot. Tally bit her bottom lip through her smile as she cut a large bite from her pancakes. Her cheeks flushed pink and her eyes watered just enough to glimmer. She held Sarah's gaze only a moment as she quietly, beautifully, perfectly said, Okay, then took her bite. And Sarah felt like she was high on salva, floating, so very alive. A simple response for a simple request. The most precious simple request of Sarah's very long life. So we're all really just going to keep eating these pancakes like we didn't just get engaged? Yarrow's voice spilled down the link, and Sarah and the others broke with a fresh wave of laughter. What? Tally asked, only to be quickly distracted by the door opening behind her. A second later, Rail's head popped through, Abigail hovering right behind her. Are we too late for breakfast? Of course not, Sarah said and waved them in. Cool, Rail said and shook a pudding cup in Tally's direction. Brought you some pudding too, Tal. Ooh, Tally beamed. Thank you. Rail was already pulling two chairs over when she stopped and frowned at Sarah. Uh, you know you have food on your face, right? I am aware. And we're all just... She glanced around the table as the biddies all chuckled. 
pretending that's normal? For the time being, yes, Sarah told her and motioned for her and Abigail to sit. I was just asking your sister if she would like to make our union official with a hand-fasting ceremony. A choking sound gurgled in the air as Abigail spewed and dribbled the juice she just drank back down into her glass. She coughed roughly as Rail whacked her on the back, and Tally bit her lip, trying not to laugh. Sarah watched the three of them, a perfect ridiculous trio she never imagined she would find family in. And yet... I'm sorry? Abigail croaked as she finally managed to clear her throat. You proposed to Tally with a fucking pancake on your head? And if laughter could cure the world... Sarah knew all ills would have dissipated at the shaking of Savannah's shoulders and the whistle of Lisha's wheeze, the crackle of Rail's cackling and the wail of Ophelia's echoing howl, the airy brightness of Tally's tinkling giggle. The moment the world shifted and somehow stayed the same. Ew, Rail! Tally suddenly said with a disgusted gasp. Her mouth hung grossly open around a glob of pudding. Is this lemon? Prior to Tally Craven's introduction into her life, Sarah had never spent so much time in Fort Salem's infirmary. Most ills or injuries suffered by her biddies, and thus by her, were dealt with privately, in the security and secrecy of her own office. On occasion, she visited to address various reforms or practices, to see to the progress of a promising soldier's healing, or to check on someone dear to her. But then once over the years, she rushed to the infirmary to ensure with her own eyes that Anacostia was alive and well, and then to scold her thoroughly for not taking better care. At least once, it was to tease her for allowing a recruit to get the jump on her in basic. But over the last weeks, Sarah felt as if she spent more time in the infirmary than out. She didn't mind so much since it meant ensuring Tally's health and happiness, the two things that mattered more to her than any other in the world. Still... She'd rather be in her own bed than sitting atop yet another infirmary cot. She'd rather have Tally in their bed as well. Everything looks and sounds okay, Wick reported as she pulled her stethoscope from her ears and slung it around her neck. Sarah had requested she do a complete manual checkup in addition to the usual scanning seed. To her credit, Wick had done so without complaint, and Tally had sat silently, allowing every little test and question. Sarah right beside her, holding her hand when Wick didn't require it. I don't see any reason to worry. And the memory loss? Tally asked, only for Wick to shake her head. I'm not sure, she said. I can confer with Isadora when she's finished with her class. But the nature of your bond and the work that was performed is so rare. It's likely none of us will have an answer for you. Some work simply takes its toll, and sometimes that toll manifests in odd ways. Memory loss is not unheard of. She gave a kind smile as Sarah nodded to dismiss her, then disappeared behind the curtain and off into another part of the infirmary. In the silence left behind, Sarah released Tally's hand to slide her arm around her back instead. Her palm rested on Tally's hip, thumbs soothing back and forth, as she leaned in so only Tally could hear. Are you all right? Tally nodded and nuzzled into her smiled when Sarah lay a whisper of a kiss to her jaw. Maybe you're just not meant to remember it. Rail chimed in from where she stretched herself out along the opposite cot. Like, maybe it's too much for your brain to have two competing childhoods to remember. So it had to nix one, you know? <laughs> well, glad it wasn't my actual childhood, Tally said with an uncomfortable laugh. Not that it was amazing or anything, but I wouldn't want to lose it. Sarah squeezed her hip. You haven't lost anything, my love. She said quietly and ran her thumb gently back and forth under Tally's shirt, just over the warm flesh of her lower back. Except all the best things we wanted to rib you about, Abigail said from her place beside Rail. She released an annoyed sigh. How convenient. Rail chuckled. <laughs> well, we still have plenty to tease you about, Abs, because we all remember. Indeed, Sarah said, and Abigail grimaced. Maybe it's better if we just put the whole thing behind us and move on. Rail smirked. Oh, sure. Now it's best if we all put it behind us. 
Abigail's only response was to shove Rail off the bed. Are we certain the two of you haven't regressed to childhood? Sarah asked as Rail straightened herself up and pushed Abigail over to wriggle in beside her again. Before either could speak up to defend herself, Callie cleared her throat and drew everyone's attention back to her. Um, thank you. All of you, she said. I just really wanted to say that. I don't remember, but I know you all took care of me the best you could during a really weird time. The weirdest, Rail said with a nod and Tally chuckled. I really couldn't ask for better sisters, she said and smiled at the two idiots opposite her. She then looked to Sarah, raised a hand and palmed her cheek. Or a better soulmate. There you are. Petra's voice startled the small group, both Rail and Abigail struggling to sit themselves up into something resembling attention, and Tally and Sarah each standing to greet her. Petra quickly waved for them to relax. No, no, no. Sit. Please. What are you doing here? Abigail asked as her mother came to stand with the group, and Petra cocked abroad her. Last I check, I was a general, which means I go where I please, Abigail. She replied, a teasing smile working her lips, and Sarah couldn't help her laugh. Abigail's shocked O oh, of a face was too hysterical. But then Petra was sharing Sarah's laugh, and it filtered through the other three like lazy river water until they were each infected with it, calming and finding their way to ease. What can we do for you, General? Sarah asked, her hand unwavering from its work at Tally's hip, a steady soothing she refused to stop. Not for anyone or anything. Certainly not for something as petty as appearances or appropriateness. She was off-duty, after all. I simply wanted to check in now that some time has passed since Tally's return, Petra said and smiled softly at Tally. I hope you are settling back in well enough. No unfortunate side effects? Sarah sighed as Tally stiffened under her arm. Petra was yet another person they would have to tell about the memory loss. Not that it was anything to be ashamed of, but it wore on them. It was hard on Tally. Sarah knew. To have to acknowledge that she lost so much time, time she would likely never recover. The reminder of all her body had gone through without any actual memory of it outside of what, as she told Sarah, felt like strange little echoes in her blood and bones. Nothing more nothing less. Sarah herself was tired of telling already after informing the biddies, Tally's sisters, Anacostia, Wick, and Isadora, so she could only imagine how exhausted Tally herself must be. Still, Petra needed to know. Have a seat, Sarah said, and wondered where to begin. When they finished telling Petra of their recent developments, the woman said nothing. She sat in rigid silence for a long, long moment as the others waited, watching her, unsure of her reaction. Then, Sarah. Sarah raised one brow. Petra? Petra looked up at her, her forehead wrinkled as if pressed under the weight of confusion or thought. Perhaps both. Do you remember when Tally... She frowned harder eyes moving to Tally and back. When small Tally whispered to me that day in my office, just before you returned to the necropolis, the return I was vehemently against and ruthlessly overruled on, Sarah droned. My apologies, no. I'm drawing a fortunate blank. Abigail snorted as Rail let out a bark of laugh, then both quickly slapped hands over each other's faces to quiet themselves. Sorry. Rail said as the two generals looked at them. We're just not used to Sarah. Um, uh, I mean General Alder being so funny. Oh, she can be hilarious, Petra admitted, much to the surprise of every other person in the room, but none more so than Sarah herself. Now isn't one of those times, but yes, she can be quite funny. Sarah pressed her lips hard to prevent a laugh of her own and shook her head. You were saying, General? Yes, that day, Petra said. I thought it odd at the time, but amusing, and honestly, I thought 
little of it, so I agreed. But now I'm wondering, what did I say to you? Tally asked, somewhat nervous, but also clearly eager to know. You said, Petra. Um, I think you mean Petwa, Rail interrupted, and Tally groaned. Petra gave a soft chuckle. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's cute and everything, but we're waiting here, Abigail said, and Petra scoffed at her daughter's insolence. Sarah, of course, found that rather hilarious considering Petra herself was precisely the same way and had always been, even in the face of Sarah herself, who few dared disrespect. You know, perhaps I should just do as you asked, she told Tally, and see what happens. And before Tally or Sarah or anyone could interject or question her. Petra opened her mouth and out spilled a seed that Sarah instantly recognized. Seed 41, the seed of repose. Sarah had used it countless times, a way to calm the agitated. It was particularly effective with the anxiety attacks common to soldiers new to battle. The seed sang over the short distance between Petra and Tally, and Sarah watched as Tally's body immediately loosened. Her face went almost comically lax, a somewhat drunken expression taken hold. A moment later, Petra layered in another seed, one that took Sarah completely by surprise. Seed 74. The Seed of Revival. Sarah's eyes widened as a gas suddenly rent the air, and Tally's eyes glazed to the point of near-solid whiteness. What's happening? Abigail asked, both she and Rail jolting up at Tally's reaction. Petra's seeds warbled to a close, but Tally remained unchanged, her body fully relaxed but her eyes gone, milky and hazed. Sarah squeezed Tally's hip, lay her other hand over Tally's thigh, kneading. Tally didn't respond, didn't seem to even know Sarah was there. She asked you to sing the seed of revival? she looked to Petra, when she was only five. Petra nodded. I thought it strange at the time, since the seed is mostly used for reviving struggling infants, but she told me she would need it when she was big again. And when you said she lost her memories, I thought perhaps... She shook her head slowly back and forth. Do you think her knowing abilities were advanced by the pure song bond? Into precognition? Sarah asked feeling her brows tilt up towards her hairline. Is there another explanation for her request? Petra challenged. She may not have understood it at the time, but it is possible she was foreseeing a loss of her memories or something she knew, on some level. She would need this once she was restored? The idea stirred in Sarah's gut. It burned in her chest. It absolutely blew her fucking mind. Knowing was a rare skill amongst which kind. Nor is with the ability of foresight was even rarer. But it wasn't entirely unheard of, and Sarah had already witnessed the power of the pure song bond. It wasn't out of the realm of possibility that such power might have rapidly developed Tally's natural abilities, allowing new skills of such of a nature to develop. In fact, the more she thought about it, the more Sarah had to acknowledge that it wasn't only possible, it was probable. And when Tally was small, she wasn't working with her own abilities, and that provided by pure song, but with the influence and power of the biddies as well. All that power in one small body. The possibilities, truly, would have been quite endless. How else would she even known the seeds of revival? Petra asked. We only teach it to our advanced fixture and midwife classes. My mom taught it to me, Rael said with a nod. I've never had to use it, though. Does it even restore memories? I thought it was supposed to be like, you know, the witch version of CPR. Like a last resort? Technically, it isn't specific to any one thing, Petra said, and Sarah nodded, listening even as her eyes fixed on Tally. It would work to revive anything laying dormant if sung properly. Like Tally's memories, Abigail said, and Petra nodded. Another gasp jolted them all, and every eye in the room shot to Tally. Her own eyes blinked rapidly, their milky white haze fading to reveal rich brown again. A second later, 
They glossed and glimmered with tears, and Tally turned shakily towards Sarah. The look she gave was one of shock, of wonder, and Sarah felt it in every part of her body. What is it, my love? she asked and raised a hand to palm Tally's cheek. Did you regain your memories? Tally shook her head, just a touch of a frown pulling at her lips before smoothing again. No, I... No memories. That took both Sarah and Petra by surprise. Petra's shoulders falling as if disappointed her work hadn't done as they'd hoped. But Tally's face was too wondersome for Sarah to feel the same disappointment. Something had happened, she knew. Something swirling like madness in Tally's mind if the energy coming off of her was anything to go by. Sarah could read her like a book. She rubbed her thumb along Tally's bottom lip and smiled at her, encouraging. What did you see? I think... Tally swallowed thickly and licked her lips. Her eyes watered heavily as her gaze darted to Petra, then her sisters in back. When a tear finally fell, it disappeared into the salt of Sarah's skin, melting into her fingers as they held Telly's face. I think I saw the future. Slowly, Sarah nodded, keeping calm. That's okay, Tally, she promised, knowing how disorientating new developments in one's strengths and power could be. Everything will be okay. Sarah. Tally's voice dropped to a whisper. It trembled. She brought both hands up to Sarah's arm, her fingers wringing Sarah's wrist. We need to be alone. Sarah nodded again, resolute. She would always give Tally whatever she needed, no questions asked. She looked to the others, Petra, Abigail, and Rael, each watching them in silence, somewhat awkwardly, waiting. If you will excuse us, she said and rose to her feet, drawing Tally up with her. Tally stood on somewhat shaky legs, her hands never leaving Sarah's arm, nails digging in as if she was attempting to anchor herself to Sarah, anchor herself in the here and now, steady herself after whatever future she'd only just witnessed. Petra inclined her head respectfully as Sarah led Tally past her and towards the infirmary door. As they made their way out, Sarah heard Rail's voice call out from behind, weak and worried, but filled with care. Love you, Tal. She did. They all did. Sarah, most of all. When Sarah led Tally through the door, the biddies, all waiting in the hall, fell into step behind them without a word. Sarah could feel their concern pressing at her mind, but she didn't have it in her to soothe them. Her head and her heart were a mess of concern, focused entirely on Tally. Just tell me, Sarah gently urged as she lay opposite Tally atop their bed. Their legs and hands entangled. They lay on their sides facing one another, heads sharing a pillow. Tally's eyes hadn't stopped watering since they left the infirmary, and Sarah was beginning to feel physically ill with worry. Are you certain they weren't your missing memories? They weren't, Tally said, sure. Not a single memory. Positive. Just flashes of the future. Flashes that I think I had while I was, you know, small or whatever, but then I forgot them. Sarah sighed and nodded. Okay, she said, stroking one foot up and down Tally's calf, soothing. Well, whatever it is, we can deal with it. We will deal with it. I promise you this but I need to know what it is if I am to help. I don't even know where to begin, Tally said, voice cracking. Her hands tightened around Sarah's, their fists resting in the small space between their chests. An uncomfortable, breathy laugh left her. I don't even know how to begin. With some difficulty, Sarah pulled one of her hands free of Tally's grip and used it to wipe her love's cheeks clean. Is it truly so terrible, whatever it was you saw? No, Tally blurted, catching Sarah off guard. Her hand shot up to latch onto Sarah's again, where it still hovered at her cheek. No, no, Sarah. It wasn't terrible. 
her words stuttered and stalled. Or, well, some of it was? Terrible? Really? Really terrible. I love your confusing me. Tally wiggled closer until she could rest her forehead against Sarah's, nuzzled their noses together. I know, she whispered, her voice wet and tired. I know it's confusing. I'm confused. God, it's, it was so much. My brain feels like it's on crack. Not that I know what being on crack feels like. She groaned and pressed herself harder against Sarah. Oh, why am I talking about crack? Sarah chuckled. Focus. Some of it, Tally said, coming back to herself. Sarah, some of what I saw, I'm not even sure if it was possible, if it was real. She shook her head, hair swishing against their shared pillow. Even thinking about it now, my heart feels like it might explode. It was true. Sarah knew. She could feel Tally's heart racing in the pulse of her wrist. It thumped wildly under Sarah's fingers. Can you show me? Sarah asked and brought their shared hands to her lips. She kissed Tally's knuckles, one after another. Would that be easier for you? Tally sighed so thoroughly that it seemed to have started in her toes and worked its way up the entire length of her body. She clearly hadn't even considered such a solution. Her relief was palpable. Yes, she said an inch closer, pushing her forehead a little harder against Sarah's. Yes, please. Oh, thank you. Close your eyes, then, Sarah encouraged, then set the tip of her index finger to Tally's temple. When she closed her own eyes, she expected to be gently drawn into Tally's recollection of what she'd seen. Instead, Tally's volatile energy sent her reeling, yanking Sarah's consciousness forward and into the imagery with nauseating speed and force. She barely had time to orientate herself before the first hazy picture clarified, and she was looking at the back of Tally's head. Tally was using a small handheld mirror to check the back of her hair in a larger mirror that Sarah recognized as Anacostia's, the vintage vanity that had been her mother's. Through Tally's eyes, Sarah took in the sight of her love's auburn hair, shiny and woven into a pristine replica of Sarah's own trademark braid. Layered throughout the weave were little blooms and crystals, making the rich red of Tally's hair stand out beautifully, like warm autumn rays. It's perfect, my love, said a voice that Sarah instantly recognized as her own. The mirror in front of her shifted, and Tally turned to look up. Seeing herself through Tally's eyes was a truly alien experience for Sarah. She stood in an open doorway in her dress blues, not another soul around, watching Tally with a genuinely easy smile, her eyes on Tally almost lazy with affection. She stretched a hand forward, palm up and open, waiting. Shall we get married now? As Tally stood, her vision shifting, the imagery flickered and dropped away so quickly that Sarah felt her stomach drop with it. The next vision flooded Sarah's mind with dizzying speed, and she was even farther into the future. She knew this not because she suddenly found herself in the training room, sparring rail collar, whose hair was notably longer, but because of the words pouring out of the girl's mouth. Oh, shit, Tell! Rail's face morphed into panic as she moved towards her, hands gently extending but low, not going for Tally's shoulders, but for her. In the vision, Tally's gaze dropped, so Sarah's dropped with it, and she saw Tally's stomach as Rail's hands came around it, a small but obvious and perfectly rounded bump under her training jacket. Sarah's heart went mad, pounded. She could feel her chest heaving around it. She could feel it creeping up into her throat. It's fine, Sarah heard Tally say, then laughed. <laughs> Sarah wards my entire torso every morning. She's almost annoyingly overprotective. It's really cute. 
Rose, Rael said, but her face was all joy. The vision didn't drop out of view. It rushed like a river, and Sarah felt swept up in it. She found herself spilling into the next vision and grasping into it, trying to steady herself in the image. She was laughing. Well, Tally was laughing. Sarah could feel the glee of it tickling in her own belly as she stood under a tree. It was young. Sarah could tell by the height and color of it, but its branches were still large and strong enough to hold the thin, swaying ropes leading down to the small basket-like swing holding a wriggling, giggling infant with a rich, dark tuft of hair and tiny, puffy fists. Tally's hands extended in front of her, catching the swing and gently pushing it forward again as the baby inside laughed and laughed. She loves it, Tally said, and Sarah heard her own voice again. Yes, and now it's my turn to push. Tally's body jarred as it was pulled back by Sarah's hands at the waist. Sarah felt her own soft kiss to Tally's cheek. Sit and relax, my love. You have earned it. Sarah's heart was so wild and swollen that she felt pressed and overly full. She could feel her eyes stinging with tears and wasn't sure if it was hers or Tally's. And suddenly, a memory of Sarah's own blinked through her mind, or rather her ears. Tally's small, five-year-old voice popped between them like firecracker echoes. I want an outdoor and then we get married. I push the baby. Then you push the baby. Sarah felt overwhelmed with the realization, the confirmation. Tally, at only five years old, had indeed been seen the future. Nothing more than brief glimpses, but enough for her to understand that whatever she saw was real. All those little moments, her small girl's random outbursts, they hadn't been random at all, but inspired by the images passing through her mind like fleeting daydreams. And then Sarah was being thrown into the next vision before she could even begin to feel the effect of the last. The immense likeness of she and Tally's miraculous joy. And in a harsh blink, that joy was gone. And Sarah found herself in the middle of Fort Salem's half-destroyed grounds, the sunny midday sky unnaturally, violently stormy. Screams split the air from all sides as her feet, or rather Tally's feet, pounded the earth. She was running, and by the tightness in her chest and the hammer of the pavement, Sarah could only assume it was for her fucking life. And then Tally glanced over her shoulder, and Sarah saw. She knew. Something terrible was about to happen. A man Sarah didn't recognize was emerging through the dark of some kind of sickly cluster of twisting, pitch-colored vines that had somehow eaten through the wall of one of Fort Salem's dormitories. The grin on his face was maniacal, sinister, as he held open his arms and seemed to urge the writhing darkness forward. As it raced towards them, Tally picked up her pace. A young witch appeared from the door of another dormitory, and Tally's voice rang through the air. Run! Switch plague! Sarah's earlier racing heart had nothing on this one. This one screamed like something possessed. Sarah felt as if the organ might punch right out of her chest. What the hell was happening? Was Fort Salem being invaded? But then the image was cracking like glass, and Tally's sight shoved Sarah into the next vision with vicious force. And suddenly Sarah was looking at herself again. Only she wasn't joyful. She wasn't serene. She was pure storm. She was an unholy, terrifying snarl of fury as she slung and whipped her scourge with such ferocity that she decapitated three men at once and split another in two at a truly grotesque angle. With nauseating speed, Tally whirled on her heels, pulling Sarah's view of herself out of sight and replacing it with two more men racing through an open door. Tally struck so forcefully with her voice that their clothes and flesh literally tore from their bones. A shocking show of force that Sarah couldn't imagine Tally ever using, no matter how dire the situation. Beyond the open door, Sarah could see more men fighting to their deaths against her own fearsome biddies, wielding scourges and work. By the goddess, what was happening? But then a horrible shriek, 
shredded the air. Telly whirled again, and Sarah found herself staring at an image she knew would haunt her for days, years, perhaps the rest of her life. Ten small children cowered in a corner behind toppled chairs and desks and bins, shaking and crying, terrified. Oh, goddess. They were in the Fosterlings building, in a classroom. And right in front of the group, the tiny girl, had a mess of long, wild black hair and dimpled, puffy cheeks streaked with tears, was screaming her fear with such force and power that the room began to shake. Tally raced to her as the sounds of Sarah's future self fighting behind her continued, and then Tally was scooping the small girl up, and Sarah could feel the perfect weight of her in her arms, on her hip, and knew without a doubt that this was her daughter. There, daughter. Tally's hand cupped the girl's cheek, and Sarah looked into perfect, familiar brown eyes, glossed with tears. I have you, she heard Tally say, and Sarah finally understood. Tally would rend any man, anyone, into pieces who dare threaten their child. Go, Tally! Sarah heard her own voice scream. Go! The small group of children fizzled into darkness as the vision was rapidly replaced again and Sarah was once more looking upon herself. She was sobbing upon herself. Her vision was blotted with tears as Tally knelt over Sarah's tattered uniform and rapidly aging body and screamed for her to hold on. Sarah watched her open lips part to speak before an explosion of indigo light blasted through her vision, and Sarah watched in awe both Tally's as well as her own as her body began to grow young again. A new vision punched through, and Sarah jerked with the force of it in her mind. Her stomach protested, her mouth watered. How did Tally deal with this? It was more disorientating than anything Sarah had ever experienced. But then, nothing else in the world mattered. Not her nausea or her rapidly firing, overthinking brain. Not the discomfort in her body or the worry seeping through her blood. Nothing. Because through Tally's eyes, Sarah saw only their daughter. There she was, from a distance, standing in the center of the training grounds. She was older now, a teen maybe, by the state of her stature, and standing beside a slightly aged but still easily recognizable Abigail, who seemed to be directing her. Their daughter's dark hair blew wildly in the wind of a storm she was clearly creating. With Tally's vision, Sarah could see it. The work. It was pure, royal purple, as it floated from her throat and absorbed into the screaming sky, alive with funnels and crackling with lightning held perfectly at bay. Sarah felt Tally's chest swell with pride, with wonder, and felt the echo of it in her own body. Her vision swamped with the image of herself as Tally turned to look beside her, where Sarah stood watching, eyes glistening with tears, and a soft, pleased smile touching her lips. Seated on her shoulders, her hands securely wrapped around meaty little calves, was a tiny girl, no more than two. Her chubby fingers were wrapped in Sarah's disheveled braid, and her big blue eyes stared out from under her short, dark curls as she watched her big sister perform. Sarah! Tally's voice called over the pristine roar of the storm, and Sarah saw herself turn. When her own blue eyes caught her over the top of a toddler's thigh, Tally laughed. Sarah felt it vibrate in her own throat. It sang beautifully for a moment, then disappeared into air. She is going to change the world! Her future self's brilliant smile widened. Sarah watched it, felt it, somehow. No, my love, she said. They are going to save it. Sarah heard a sob in the distance and knew it wasn't part of the vision, but a remnant of reality. A cry from either her own throat or Tally's as they lay in their bed in the past, in the present, sharing this. Them. All that would come, terrible and good.
Tally freed another beautiful laugh and looked down. And there Sarah saw again Tally's stomach, swollen and bulging. Beautiful. So very good. When the vision twisted again, then shimmered into another, Sarah felt herself flow right along with it, still overwhelmingly fast, but now eager to see more. To know more. God, as she wanted. She needed more. The new vision took hold and Sarah saw herself blink into view again. She lay opposite Tally in their bed, the room Sarah recognized as their current one. No bigger, no different. Her blue eyes were wet and wide as she opened her mouth and sang the seed of revelation. The only effect was a gasp as she heard from Tally's lips, felt it in her own throat. And then Sarah was being ripped from Tally's mind like a heart torn from a chest and tossed back into reality with relentless force. She took a loud, heavy breath as she opened her eyes and found Tally looking back at her. They were exactly as they had been, lying close atop their bed, foreheads touching, the tips of their noses brushing, staring into each other's weepy eyes. Do you see now? Tally whispered voice trembling. Why I couldn't tell you. How could I even be gone? There are no words for that, for any of it. I'm not even sure it was real. Sarah's heart ached. Tally had seen so much, and at only five years old. All her little frowns and whimpers, the ones that had worried Sarah as she sat up watching her small love sleep, crept back into her mind. No wonder Goddess, what a burden. What an incredible, awful, perfect gift. Sarah was overwhelmed, scared and delighted at once, full and light at the same time. Oh, my love, she said and held Tally's cheek, swiped a thumb through her tears. How strong you are. How could it be real? We... Her voice was so quiet that her words barely reached Sarah's ears dissipating into near nothingness at the first touch. She sighed and licked her lips, shook her head as if caught in her disbelief, undone by it. We had children, and they were ours, Sarah. They were ours. We made them. We made her. I could feel it. I could see it. Was that possible? Sarah's thoughts were spinning, cycling, tangling themselves into knots, but her body was pure instinct. Before she could even fathom what she was doing, she shifted her hand down to Tally's flat belly and under her shirt. She lay her palm over her warm flesh and opened her mouth. Without thought, she sang, and the seed that spilled from her throat was the perfect match to the one she'd only just watched herself sing in Tally's vision. The pitch was pure, the effect instant. Tally gasped as a sudden heat spread through Sarah's hand and into Tally's abdomen, seeking. What answered was a miracle. Sarah felt the present, the here and now, in a small vibration of energy echoing back up into her hand from Tally's womb. She heard the future, the heartbeat that would develop in mere weeks. She saw even farther. The vision Tally had shared with her still swimming in her mind. Their daughter in the swing. A chubby, cherished baby. Happy and loved. A gorgeous, bright sob of a laugh jumped from Tally's lips, and Sarah looked up at her, the heat and energy still dancing in her palm. She's already here? She cried, and Sarah felt the words more than heard them. It was real. It, it was real. Sarah's entire body was a pulse of joy. How is this happening? She whispered, and Tally laughed and cried again, louder, longer, her body a vessel for the wild tide of knowing. She shook her head and looked at the space between their chest. Pierce song. Tally whispered as she ran her finger along what looked like empty space, except Sarah felt it. They both did shivering at the sensation. The energy of their daughter's budding life force zapped against Sarah's palm again, and she felt her own throat bubble with laughter. 
with the most miraculous euphoric glee. Perhaps it didn't matter how it had happened, only that it had. Tally. Sarah slid her hand up from Tally's stomach, up over her chest and around the back of her neck, under the wave of her auburn hair. You, this, we, are the purest song I have ever known. With a gentle tug, she pulled her in and kissed her, soundly, firmly. Tally sniffled and buried her face in Sarah's neck as they pressed the distance from between them with an almost painfully tight embrace. We're going to be parents, Sarah, she whispered, then choked on her own words. Oh, God, it's, we already are parents. Sarah chuckled, felt her palms begin to sweat. Yes, it seems we are. God, as she could scream, she was excited. She was fucking terrified. The future was coming. It was blooming right before their eyes. And yes, clearly, it would have its trials, its horrors, its losses. But oh, what bliss between. Tally breathed slowly, one deep inhale and one long exhale then once more until her body calmed in Sarah's embrace. Are you happy? She asked in a murmur against flesh. She shifted back, just enough to see Sarah's face, to look in her eyes. Her own were hopeful, pleading, and Sarah felt that hope, that need in her chest, pressing, swelling. She was certain she would float if she expanded any further. Tally, she whispered and planted a kiss to the corner of Tally's mouth, then another further out, in the shallow mark of a dimple. I'm questioning if I ever truly knew happiness until this very moment. She laughed, loudly and more freely than she could ever recall doing, and cupped Tally's cheek, kissed her again, soundly, firmly, forever. My love. I feel like I could fly. Seven weeks later. Abigail whined when the first ultrasound resulted in a strong, thumping heartbeat. Are you fucking kidding me? Rail balked, the revealing seed croaking to silence in her throat. The heartbeat faded with it. She'd begged Sarah to let her do the test after learning how, and Sarah had Kay mostly only because Tally had pouted until she agreed. What? She frowned. Sounded good, Abs. Strong. I know, Abigail huffed. I was hoping all of this was going to turn out to be, you know, fucking fantasy or whatever, and Tally wasn't really preggers. Tally put a hand to her chest in mock offense, but couldn't help her laugh. Abigail Bellwether, you will love my perfect child or else. You know what this means for me, right? Abigail groaned. If you have a kid, my mom's never going to shut up about how it's time for me to do my duty. Look at me. She flicked a wrist in front of herself, flourishing her fingers as if to say she'd been made by magic. This body deserves to have fun before it turns into a fucking balloon. Tally pouted, clearly thinking of her own body ballooning, only for Raelle to awkwardly pat her hand and say, A cute balloon towels. The cutest balloon. A balloon with a baby in it. I don't want to be cute, Abigail said. I want to be a fucking nightmare. I want to be someone's deepest, goddess damned fear. She sighed and plopped into the nearest chair. And you can't threaten me to love a baby, Tally. Sarah cleared her throat from her seat at the edge of the bed, where she'd been quietly observing the trio's ridiculous squabbling over this and that for the last half hour. Perhaps she can't, she said, and stood, rising to her full stature. But I can. She pinned Abigail with a fierce glare and dropped her tone, broadened it until it was deep and commanding. You will love this child as fiercely and loyally as you love your sisters, Abigail. You will love her and her eventual siblings as deeply as if they were your own. And you will do so happily. Sarah carried on with a sharp gaze even as she fell silent, letting it stand until Abigail's rigid, 
attentive body began to twitch with discomfort. Finally, she relaxed, shoulders falling, expression easing. Is that understood? Abigail grimaced, but gave a hard nod. Yes, ma'am. Beside her, Rael snorted with laughter, and Tally shook her head, grinning. Her hand found Sarah's and tangled their fingers together. Already so protective, she teased. Always, Sarah said with a smirk. She leaned down and kissed Tally's cheek, slid her lips up to the hollow of her ear, and dropped her voice to a whisper. I have you, my love. Slowly she drew their joined hands to Tally's belly and lay them open over top. I have you both. Tally hummed her pleasure inside. I know, she said and leaned into Sarah's cheek. We're yours. Yes. Sarah kissed her softly again. And I am yours. With a smile, Tally turned and nuzzled her. My Sarah. Okay, we are leaving now, Rael announced and grabbed Abigail's hand to drag her towards the door. You guys are being gross. She was never this gross before you, Tally, Abigail called as she was led away. Just saying. When the door closed behind them, Sarah kissed Tally soundly on the mouth. Mm. Tally hummed and melted into the press. When Sarah pulled away again, Tally freed a quiet laugh. <laughs> I should tell them you only act gooey in front of them to get them to leave. Don't you dare, Sarah said, and Tally's laugh bloomed into the most beautiful song. Sarah heard work in it, the tender, perfect tones of destiny. Please find a fan fiction you just listened to on Archive of Our Own and leave the author some love. Without them, this wouldn't be possible, and we want to thank them from the bottoms of our hearts for creating these amazing stories and keeping the show alive.